Hey guys, welcome back to the Girl Gone London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a dual American and UK citizen. If you're not new here, welcome back. Glad to have you. Make sure you hit subscribe if you want more UK versus American content. Today, I'm talking about the most unexpected things about the UK that I didn't know before I moved here. Unexpected thing number one is that transportation is really, really good here. And when I mean transportation, I mean public transportation. So even in very rural areas, it's not uncommon to have a pretty reliable bus system. Yes, it's not necessarily going to be as good in a remote area as having your own car, but I'm used to coming from a place where there's there's really nothing in terms of public transportation. Florida is a very, very, very car heavy destination. We do have some buses, but they're relatively unreliable and most people don't take them. I was really shocked by being able to get a lot of places on, on buses um, in the UK. I knew the train system was pretty good and well connected, which it is, but you can definitely take buses and reliable buses so many more places in the UK than you can in many parts of America, even including more rural destinations. So that was definitely an unexpected but positive thing that I learned about the UK when I first moved here. So the next unexpected thing was a mail slot. So in America, for the vast majority of homes, particularly suburban homes, we have a mailbox that is outside your home, close to the street, and the mailman drives by. Uh, very American. <laughs> so in the UK, even in suburban areas, it is not common um, to have any sort of, I don't think I've ever seen an American style mailbox. I'm not saying they don't exist, um, but for the most part, you have a mail slot. And I feel like this is the wrong term for it. And somebody like, to me, it's a mail slot. It's a slot in your door that the mail goes through. Um, so the postman or postwoman or post person will come up to your door, slide the mail through, and it ends up in your home. I just, I mean, there's so much to think about when you first moved to the UK. I think how I would get my mail wasn't really at the top of my list. Um, and so it's a pretty cool feature of mail here because you don't have to actually like leave your house to get the mail to go anywhere or to walk to the end of your driveway if you live again in a more suburban area this doesn't apply to necessarily like apartments or flats um but yeah in our house the mail just gets slid through the door magically appears like inside my home don't have to put on um any like real clothes to walk outside and get the mail and that was an unexpected part of life in the uk okay so another unexpected thing was that you have to turn on an outlet. So it has an actual off and on switch in the UK um, and you have to make sure that it is on in order to charge things. So I did not expect this because I had never plugged anything in in the UK before moving here and genuinely I have I am now a British citizen. I'm now a full British citizen. Yesterday after being here for 10 plus years I forgot to turn on the actual switch to the outlet and thought I was charging something. Turns out I wasn't. It still happens to me to this day because in the States, our, um, our outlets are just always on. So you plug something in, it's charging. You take the plug out, it's no longer charging, but there's no actual switch that you need to turn on for that electric current to flow through. So turning on your electrical outlets before you use them was definitely an unexpected thing um, that I had to learn when living in the UK and still apparently have to learn. The next unexpected part about life in the UK was something called a washing up bowl or what I used to call it a washing up bucket because it looks more like a bucket to me than a bowl. But essentially it is something that many UK households will use. And I've had the occasional American tell me their family did this, but it is much less common in the US. And so what it is, is it's a bowl that you put in your sink and you essentially use this now as your sink for washing things up. So you would put the water and the soap and the dishes in this bowl within your sink 
to do your dishes. Again, this was very foreign to me when I first moved here. I don't like a washing up bowl. I've started this discussion and this um, battle between those of us who do and don't before. I don't, I hate them. I know there are reasons that you have for them. I have never used one, but I didn't even know what it was when I first moved here. I was like, why do you have a sink within a sink? Why is there a bowl to wash up your bowls in your sink? So it was an unexpected part of life here um, and something that I decided not to use, but really had never thought about or heard of before that. The next unexpected thing about life in the UK is how fast Amazon delivery is here. I'm not talking about your standard delivery companies that often just like deliver a box to your garbage can and then it gets taken out. I'm talking specifically if you order something on Amazon, it gets to your house so much faster than in the US. I'm used to ordering things in the US on Amazon and waiting just like days on end. I don't know if it's because the UK is smaller so it's easier to get around so stuff comes faster, but Amazon UK, when I first moved here, I was like ordering something and it would get there the next day. Blew my mind without even having Prime. Still to this day, I find that Amazon UK delivery is relatively fast and quicker than I've experienced in the US. The next unexpected thing about life in the UK when I first moved here was the different vacation destinations that people would go to. Now this makes sense in hindsight, but because of the location of the UK and just because of certain things like holiday time and things like that, there are some countries like Thailand and Australia that it's much more common to come across someone in the UK who has been to those places. Um, other ones would be like the Canary Islands are huge in terms of UK visitors, particularly when they want the sun. In the US, coming across somebody who has been to Thailand or know somebody who's been to Thailand is very, very uncommon. Um, we, as a culture and as a country in a certain location have our own vacation destinations and own um, favorite international places to go to. And I know that this also varies country by country. Every country has this, but it's just something that I didn't think about when moving to the UK. And so I've kind of learned over time the places that Brits tend to go to on vacation and they don't often line up with places that my American friends and family, even when traveling internationally, would have gone to. One of the reasons is a lot of times Americans travel internationally, they come to the UK. Many of you watching this will be in that position. So being in a country where now um, I get to talk to people about their vacations, yeah, again, in Tenerife, in Thailand, in Australia, in New Zealand, or maybe their, you know, their US vacation as opposed to my US friends and family who would dream of taking trips to places like France and to places like the UK, but many wouldn't have gone to places like the Canary Islands, Thailand, etc. And the last unexpected thing that I had to learn about life in the UK was the idea that often houses have names and not numbers. So this is going to be much, much more common if you're in a more rural area. Um, it doesn't necessarily apply like my neighborhood and my estate, we have numbers. We don't have house names. But so sometimes like the actual address that you write on the envelope, I can't even think of an example name, but it would be something, something like, I don't know, like Blue Cottage. Just that's an example. And that's the actual name. It's like Blue Cottage, blah, blah, blah city, United Kingdom. I don't know if they have actual numbers associated them for any sort of reason. I don't know how the uh, post people, uh, I guess like new, who are new to the route would have to, I guess, just read every name. But if you see a lot of homes in the UK, in areas like the Cotswolds, again, or more kind of rural country-ish areas um, or fancier, nicer houses, you're usually going to see instead of a number, near the front door, you're going to see the actual like name of the house. This is not something I had ever come across or I'd ever heard about in Florida. Um, even very fancy houses, they wouldn't be named. They would still have numbers, a numbered address. So this was something definitely that I had to get used to and is a really fascinating part of life in the UK. I okay, so that brings us to the end of today's video. Again, if you are moving to the UK, I have some resources for you linked below. 
check those out. Um, as with moving to any country, there's always going to be these little things that you won't expect. And I hope by watching my channel, you will expect a, a lot more than I did back in 2012 um, and maybe have done some more research on those smaller, um, very UK specific things. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.